Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. The story begins in a forest where a girl is walking alone. She hears a noise coming from above but doesn't see anything strange and continues on. A few steps later, the sound suddenly gets louder and now seems to be coming from behind her. The girl gets scared and starts running but ends up falling down. A sinister shadow rises in front of her, and we see that she is pregnant. Then we meet a young couple, Dana and Charles. He is a musician and is about to start a six-month tour. But before that, they are going to celebrate their wedding anniversary by camping in the forest. It's clear that Charles would prefer to do something else, but Dana is very eager to camp and has even dreamed of the forest. Then she suddenly stands up and says she is going to take a shower. Charles starts snooping through her camera photos, unaware of the loud music coming from the bathroom. In fact, Dana is feeling unwell and doesn't want him to hear. A little later, she calls the doctor to confirm an appointment and hesitates when she hears that a companion is necessary. She hangs up quickly when she sees Charles coming with a gift. She complains that they agreed not to buy anything, but she is happy to see it's a beautiful compass with a loving inscription on the back. She steps away for a moment, and Charles opens a drawer, taking a revolver without her noticing. They finish packing everything, load their bags into the car, and start the journey. While fiddling with the camera, Dana finds pictures of children and becomes contemplative for a moment. Then she says that when he returns from the tour, they could start thinking about having kids. Charles falls silent for a few moments before saying they aren't that kind of couple. They both enjoy adventures and travel, which doesn't really fit with dirty diapers. Dana argues that he loves his nieces and nephews, but he explains that he only wants to be the cool uncle. Besides, they had this conversation before getting married, and Dana always said she didn't want to be a mother. Trying to change the subject, she asks if he reserved the boat. Admitting he forgot, Charles stops at a roadside restaurant to make the call, and that's how we find out they didn't bring their cell phones. Dana notices a poster on the wall and we see that the photo is of the same woman who was attacked in the forest. Her name is Charlotte Keel, and she is missing. Charles soon returns and drives to the river where the boat is waiting for them. Dana continues taking photos during the crossing, and then the couple finally arrives at the forest where they plan to camp. Dana needs to stop every now and then to catch her breath, but she does her best to hide her fatigue. Seeing an empty bottle and traces that seem to be from an SUV, Charles realizes that they have company. They decide to keep looking for a quiet area to set up their tent. Charles starts talking about his band and says that Dana could photograph the group to make t-shirts. While they talk, they pass behind a tree where Charlotte's backpack is propped up, but they don't notice it. After walking a bit more, Charles begins the difficult task of setting up the tent, which could be much easier if he accepted his wife's help or at least read the manual. But he calls himself the tent wizard and insists he doesn't need assistance. When the tent is finally ready, he pulls Dana inside for a surprise, and they start enjoying a romantic moment. After Charles falls asleep, she begins to look at the photos she took on the way there. One catches her attention because there seems to be a strange shadow right next to a tree. She wakes her husband to ask what it could be. While Charles says it must just be her thumb, we see that something seems to be watching the couple up close. Dana decides to stretch her legs a bit before sleeping but soon falls asleep too, not noticing that the compass's pointer is moving for no apparent reason. In the middle of the night, she wakes up startled by a sound that resembles a gunshot. It's dark outside, and she doesn't see anything strange. She is almost falling back asleep when she hears more gunshots, now followed by laughter and chatter. Very angry to be disturbed even there, she does her best to ignore the racket from the inconvenient hunters. In the morning, Charles is again struggling with the tent, and Dana is secretly vomiting when he starts calling for her. They pack their things and begin to walk through the woods. Dana slept very poorly because of the ruckus and now wants to venture even deeper into the forest. After walking a bit more, they find a nice spot to set up the tent again and make a campfire. Dana loves the peaceful environment and comments that she could even come alone while her husband is on tour. His worries Charles a bit, and he says that's why she should make friends. Dana responds that he could also quit the tour and return to his job as a paramedic. He gets annoyed at the suggestion and says he won't let her ruin his dream. She apologizes for bringing it up, 
But now he's upset and goes into the tent grumbling that she always finds a way to ruin the fun. Dana decides to take a walk to clear her head, but what happens is quite the opposite. Not far from their own campsite, she finds a tent covered in branches and looking abandoned. Dana approaches and takes some photos until she sees an open backpack full of books. One of them is a guide for pregnant women. Dana laughs at the coincidence and decides to keep the book. That night, she wakes up startled again. Besides the banging sounds, there's now a noise that resembles motorcycles. Charles also wakes up indignantly and starts spying on the ruckus through binoculars. He sees a group of about 10 people wearing camouflage clothing, with their vehicles parked around a campfire. Everyone is drinking, and some are shooting into the air, completely ruining the peace the couple was seeking. When a motorcycle passes very close to their tent, Charles loses his patience and decides to confront the group. Dana is very scared and can't believe it when she sees him bring a gun. The two abruptly stop arguing when they hear a sound totally different from the gunshots and motorcycles. It's a sort of grunt mixed with an animalistic gargling. Charles grabs the binoculars again and sees that the party has also stopped because of the strange sound. It's hard to determine where it's coming from, and the men are pointing their weapons in all directions, trying to defend themselves. Then the sound intensifies around the group, as if they were being surrounded, and they begin to fire. One of the vehicles passes in front, and the headlights interrupt the couple's view. Several shots are still heard, and then everything suddenly goes quiet. The campfire goes out, and one of the men is lying down. The animalistic sound fades in and out, now a bit quieter. Then they hear a man calling for help. The voice isn't far away, and Charles thinks he should help him. Afraid of being left alone, Dana says she will go too, but he promises he will be back in a minute. Cursing her husband for being crazy, she zips up the tent and waits, terrified. She hears a twig snapping nearby, as if someone is lurking outside the tent, and a shadow passes quickly right after. Peeking through the clear plastic, she sees that Charles is back, carrying a man on his back. With a badly injured leg, the stranger moans and screams in pain. Dana is afraid that the thing in the woods will hear the screams and begs him to be quiet. Charles can't help him if he doesn't stop moving. So he decides to solve both problems with a hard punch, knocking his patient out. While they tend to the wound, Dana starts asking what kind of animal could have done this. Charles shows her a long claw that got caught in the man's clothes. Whatever the animal is, it's obviously something huge and fierce. They both agree that it's not safe to stay there for too long. They can use one of the ATVs from the other camp to reach the forest guard station, which isn't too far away. Charles starts thinking of a way to move the man, but Dana isn't willing to risk her life to save a stranger and says it would be wiser to get help without him. Once again, the argument is interrupted by the sinister grunts. Soon after, the man wakes up and says his name is Sean. He is a little suspicious when Charles offers him a pill, but Dana explains that her husband is a paramedic. When the couple asks what happened there, Sean says that his brother came to hunt with friends in the area and never returned. Now he brought his own group to try to find him, or at least to take revenge on whatever took him. As soon as Charles turns his back, Sean spits the pills into the water bottle. His behavior becomes increasingly strange and inappropriate. Without showing any gratitude for being saved, he can't stop making pessimistic comments about the situation and even mocks Charles's bravery. Outside, we see that a humanoid creature is lurking just a few meters away from the trio. Hearing something approaching, everyone becomes alarmed, and Charles grabs the gun. Sean asks if he really knows how to shoot. He ignores the malicious comment, keeping his aim on the shadow passing very close now. Peeking through the zipper crack, he sees it's a bear. Charles squeezes the trigger, and everything goes silent for a moment until the bear charges at them with even more anger. Its claws tear a hole in the plastic, and it's about to attack when something knocks it down. By the sounds, they realize the bear got the worst of it. Dana even considers that the mysterious being in the forest intervened to protect them, but Sean laughs at the idea. He also suggests saving the bullets, keeping one for each of them in case this becomes the best option. Charles continues ignoring these comments, already somewhat regretting saving this guy. In the forest, a hand with very long nails rests on a tree trunk, nearly completely camouflaged. Sean continues tormenting the two, 
in addition to being quite a freeloader. He complains about the healthy snack and even wants to smoke inside the tent. Trying to make conversation, he asks if the trip is a special occasion. Dana replies that they are celebrating the anniversary in the same place where Charles proposed to her. Sean starts making crude jokes about what the two came there for, and Dana becomes increasingly irritated. Unaware that he drank from the bottle where Sean spat the medications, Charles begins to feel very sleepy and dizzy. Dana takes the gun and insists that he rest. The sun rises after a few hours, and only then does Sean decide to thank them for the rescue. Dana makes it very clear that if it were up to her, he would still be out there. He's not too offended by this and starts chatting, talking about his ex-wife. Claiming that Dana resembles her, Sean insists on showing the photograph that is in his wallet, but says he can't reach it. Dana leans over to help him, very distrustful. But Sean does nothing, and the woman's photo is indeed in the wallet. Taking her turn to be inappropriate, Dana says that if he still carries that photo, it's because he hasn't forgotten the woman. Sean doesn't deny that this is true, and he expresses nostalgia for the nine-year-old daughter that she took away. He admits he isn't a good father but still regrets not being able to see the girl anymore. It's evident that the topic is difficult for him as it's the first time he speaks without irony. In fact, the two are almost having a friendly conversation now. But this doesn't last long as Sean quickly begins to compliment Dana's beauty and even reaches out to touch her hair. In the face of her indignant reaction, he responds that it doesn't hurt to try. Then a noise outside wakes Charles, and the three hear someone calling for help. Through the binoculars, he sees a man crawling on the ground. Dana takes a photo to show Sean, and he recognizes his friend Howard. He isn't far away, but Dana notices that the arrangement of branches in that area doesn't seem very natural. Horrified, she realizes that the forest being set a trap. Howard looks up and sees a gray head peeking from behind a branch. In panic, he does what he can to keep crawling toward the tent, but something suddenly grabs him and pulls him away. Dana and Charles hear movement above the tent and try to see what is happening outside. Then Howard's body drops on them, with his face right against the transparent section. When the forest being comes to retrieve him, its yellow eye appears through the bear's tear, and everyone freezes. Finally, a gray arm grabs what's left of Howard, and everything goes quiet again. Now Dana's patience reaches its limit as she demands that Sean come clean because it's becoming increasingly obvious that he knows something. What happened to Howard is proof that the forest being is capable of destroying this flimsy tent with everyone inside. But Sean is the only one who never panics, as if he knows that the creature can't enter there. Under pressure, he tells the two about the legend of the forest beings. Centuries ago, the indigenous village that inhabited this region went through a terrible drought. To make a sacrifice in exchange for rain, they kidnapped a young woman from a rival village and left her tied up in a bear's den. The girl was pregnant and only survived long enough to give birth. From that moment on, some pregnant women in the tribe began to disappear, and everyone who tried to rescue them would not return. Sean finishes the story saying this still happens today. Right after that, he finds the pregnancy book and starts provoking Dana, showing that he knows her secret. She asks him to be quiet and goes back to her husband's side, not noticing that she left the gun on the ground. When Charles realizes that Sean is trying to grab the revolver, the two start to fight, and Charles ends up getting shot in the leg. Furious, Dana reminds Sean that he owes his life to Charles. Aiming the gun at the couple, he replies that he still needs Dana to get out of there, as the forest beings won't attack the baby. Charles retorts that she isn't pregnant, but soon realizes the truth and is very surprised. Then Dana takes the creature's claw and jabs the tip into Sean's face, managing to take the gun from him. The couple decides to tie him to a tree outside to serve as bait while they escape to the other side. However, while Dana tends to Charles's leg, Sean manages to free himself from the rope. He goes back to his own camp and checks what's left of his group. When one of the beings begins to slide down a tree trunk, he hides under a body. Meanwhile, Dana exits the tent and risks a few steps outside. She sees one of the beings hidden behind a tree and aims the gun in that direction. As the creature reveals itself, Dana's expression starts to change, and her anger turns into curiosity. She sees that the forest being is a mix of person and plant, with gray skin and yellow eyes. Absorbed by the sight, Dana doesn't even notice that she's dropping the gun. 
When those fingers approach her belly, she brings her hand to herself and lets it touch her. The creature's eyes widen, and Dana seems to feel a dizziness. She closes her eyes with a slight smile as if she is being consumed by the forest. The sound of a gunshot interrupts the trance, and the forest being's eyes widen one last time before it collapses. Dana comes to and sees that her husband has crawled over to save her. Returning the gun, he crawls back to the tent while she runs towards the neighboring camp. Before she can see him, Sean comes out from under his friend and grabs a knife. Stumbling through the horror show that the camp has become, Dana knocks one of the victims down to get on her ATV but can't get the vehicle to start. Meanwhile, a shadow passes quickly by the tent, and we see that it's another forest being, come to collect the first one. Feeling pain in her abdomen, Dana looks to the side and sees yet another being. The creature points in her direction, and we see that on one of its fingers, there's a round ring with the image of a serpent. Now that Dana has left, the tent is attacked by the beings, and Charles cries out for help. Dana pleads for them not to hurt him and runs back. The beings move away as she enters the tent and collapses on the ground. Then Charles realizes that her belly has grown inconceivably. There's a red mark right in the middle, and Dana says something must have happened when the being touched her. Moreover, her hands are starting to turn gray, and her face begins to crack. Charles falls into despair and starts apologizing, promising that he will try to be a good father. At that moment, Sean appears with a rifle and prevents Charles from reaching his weapon. Recognizing the serpent ring on his hand, Dana discovers the truth. It wasn't his brother who disappeared in the forest but his wife, who ended up becoming one of the forest beings. Sean tells her that she was pregnant when the forest started calling to her in her dreams. Dana becomes disturbed to hear this, as it happened to her as well. Sean orders her to tie up her husband's hands and come with him. Seeing a forest being already lurking around the tent, she knows what will happen to Charles if she leaves. The dilemma is resolved when one of the beings grabs Sean and drags him out of the tent. The couple seizes the chance to escape while more beings begin to appear. Dana tries to help Charles get onto the vehicle, but her own pains are now too strong. The couple is surrounded by forest beings when Sean is thrown to the ground, and one of them points at Dana again. Sean says this is an initiation, and they want her to finish him off. The two face off briefly, and when Sean manages to knock her down, he reveals his true objective. Threatening to harm the baby, he demands that the beings let him see his daughter. After much insistence, a little gray girl appears and walks over to him with timid steps. Sean becomes very emotional, and Dana takes the opportunity to shove him. He hits his head on a sharp horn, and his daughter finishes the job with a little push. Raising her hands, Dana sees that her body continues to transform. The forest being points its finger again, and she starts to move closer to her husband. As she extends her arms towards him, we see that her hands already have long black nails. In her mind, happy memories blend with the strong pull of the forest. Then Charles says that he loves her, and she breaks his neck in a quick motion. Screaming in pain, Dana lies down on the ground, and the beings start to surround her as her eyes change color. Some time later, a young woman is walking alone in the forest when she finds her camera. The girl examines the photo of the shadow and then looks up, startled when the grunts begin.